I'm here in the village of Orkham. Behind me is St Anthony's Church, where I'm going to be filming this week's service. This weekend is Saturday the 1st and Sunday the 2nd of August, the 8th Sunday after Trinity. Welcome to the parish of Orkham with Capel of Fern and Huffham, and from me, Brian Williams, the parish priest. As we come to worship, let's take a moment just to be quiet and remember God's presence with us. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commands, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labour for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. 
I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading is from St Matthew chapter 14. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Well, what do we make of that reading from St Matthew? Jesus is trying to find a place where he can spend some time on his own. But the crowds keep following him. He heals their sick and they're still there when evening is falling. And then, with just five loaves and two fish, he feeds a crowd of nearly 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. You might be saying to yourself, come on, this is one of those stories from the Bible that sounds a bit far-fetched. But in fact, it's found in all four Gospels, which we find in the New Testament. And each of them focuses on the discussion that the disciples have about how they're going to solve the problem of feeding all these people. According to St Matthew, their favourite solution was to send the people away so that they could find food for themselves. According to St John, it's Jesus who goes to the disciples and says, what are we going to do about feeding all these people? Even though he already knows how he's going to solve this particular problem. There's a place called Tabga on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee, on a hillside overlooking the lake, stands a church. You can see it in this photograph here about halfway up the hillside. As churches go, it's not particularly old by modern standards, but it stands on the site of a far older church, one that was probably built round about the year 350. That church was probably extended during the 5th century, and it's from about that time that these floor mosaics were added. As you can see, they represent mainly the sorts of plants and wildlife that were native to Galilee at the time. But there's something else. Underneath the altar is possibly the oldest representation of any gospel story still in existence. It shows a basket with some loaves and fishes. And it tells anyone visiting, this is the spot. This is where it happened. So Matthew doesn't seem to be very interested at all in the question of how it was that Jesus managed to feed all these people with just a few loaves and fishes. He's much more interested in what it actually means. By themselves, the disciples are defeated by the situation. The only solution that they can think of is to send the people away. But 
there's an alternative. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, says the prophet Isaiah. You that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. That same generosity of God of which Isaiah speaks is shown in Jesus. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. This story would have reminded others who heard it about another story about Jesus and his disciples about another time when they were eating. And Jesus once again took bread and blessed it. And on that occasion he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus' disciples aren't expected to do everything by themselves. They need the presence of Jesus with them. And that is why, from that time to this, his disciples have taken the bread and the wine and remembered his presence with them. Let us join together in praying to God for the needs of the church, the world, our communities and ourselves, trusting in his love which reaches out from before the foundation of the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for God's church, especially for the people he has called to be prophets and teachers in our own generation. We pray that they will be strengthened and protected by the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world carrying responsibilities for the lives of their people. We pray for all victims of the world's injustices and for a new spirit of righteousness and integrity in the hearts of the powerful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of our parish, especially for those who feel excluded exploited or ignored. We pray that as God's people we may work to build a community as open and as generous as God's love shown to us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that God will bring healing in mind, body and spirit to all who are troubled. We pray that in lives darkened by any kind of pain, distress or grief, the light of Christ will bring comfort, hope and a sense of God's all-encompassing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's finish by praying for God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love, today and always. Amen. Until next time, goodbye.